So welcome to this tutorial about how to start working with strategy on social media as a music organizer. My name is Emil and I'm a digital specialist here at Volume, where I help music organizers with their online marketing efforts. And one of the things I encounter a lot is um, the fact that a lot of music venues does not have a strategy for working with social media. They might have created profiles on the right platforms, they might post regularly, but they oftentimes they don't know why they do it or what goals they're trying to achieve. And that's a problem because with the right strategy you can really hit the right audience at the right time with the right content. And that's really what we're trying to do with our online marketing efforts. So in this tutorial we're going to go into what a marketing strategy consists of and what you can do to start working with strategy uh, at your venue. So let's dig into that. Let's get started with talking about social media marketing strategy for music venues. Now I've compiled a step-by-step -step guide for you to get started with strategy. Of course strategy is a huge subject um, and we could spend hours going into it but I've compiled this this step-by-step -step guide that's kind of narrowed um, the huge plethora of content that you can find on the internet down to something that I think will be tangible for you as a music venue considering the fact that the resources at music venues are often scarce and you can't spend too much time thinking about strategies because you always have to do and do and do. So this is some some step by steps that that um, can get you started. Um, so please look at it through that lens and let's get started on the first step. So the first step is goal setting. Now you might say that the obvious goal uh, for being on social media is of course ticket sales and that's a perfectly valid uh, reason to be on social media but when we talk about social media people are not always there to buy stuff um, I found this study about motivations for using social media and a lot of it has has to do with people wanting to follow their friends to follow the news um, to find funny or entertaining content or to share videos and pictures with others. So it's a lot of individual and a lot of social reasons why they are on social media. Actually only one of these kind of maps to researching and finding products to buy. So they're really not there to listen to sales propositions. Um, and a lot of music venues are really pounding a lot of sales propositions in their communication. And that makes them seem like maybe a little bit like this um, this dog in this video, um, kind of scratching the back of potential customers, being a bit desperate to make them want to buy um, a ticket. So that's of course is, is a shame. We have to think about this differently. So what are the kinds of goals that you can define to create a social media strategy? Now, all of these goals, of course, are valid goals, um, but they also kind of gives us a certain focus. So if you want to increase awareness about your venue, that can be done in a lot of different ways. That could be done through maybe long form video. Um, if you want to drive traffic to your venue's website, maybe you have to focus more on spending money on ads and doing that cleverly. If you want to create new audiences, well, you have to go into maybe partnerships with other kinds of profiles, um, maybe find some ambassadors, that could be a strategy. Um, creating more engagement with customers, well, if you decide that that's a strategy, you'll have, that to, you'll have then to map that to a resource in customer service that could keep that engagement going. Build a community, well, you might want to look into Facebook groups or a newsletter um, to build a community around and social customer service, well, you'll have to get really good at uh, Messenger on Facebook, for example. So this is just something that is the, the guiding posts of what we're trying to do with this strategy. Um, the next thing you have to do is define your target audience. Um, and a really good way to do that is to work with a persona. Um, a buyer persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on market research and real data about your existing customers. So <clears throat> when creating a buyer persona, we really want to look into what is the data that we have on our customers. So looking inside TM1, if you got Ticketmaster or one of the other systems for, um, for ticket sales data, 
looking into demographic data on on Facebook and some of the other pl- platforms where you can research your your audience that would be a good idea and 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 also just looking at your guests when they arrive to your venue like who are the persons um, attending your your shows so I've compiled just a list of some different questions that you can use to create a persona for you um, and we'll take them one by one so who are they um, could you define a job title and age a gender and income level just to get some surface surface level information about who these people are um, what are they interested in that you can provide so are they interested in entertainment or educational content you know there's a lot of music geeks out there that want to know more um, about a certain genre or a certain artist maybe you could help them do that through creating content around that um, so we really need to dig into the the kind of um, psychological playing field too uh, to see what are these people interested in so where do they usually hang out online we also need to know are they using facebook instagram or some kind of niche media that we don't even know about yet um, that would be really really useful to know um, and why do they consume the content is it to stay entertained or is it to stay up to date or is it because that you know they use it to share to say something about themselves that could be a lot of reasons but you in creating the content and creating the strategy you have to know the reasons why your target audiences are consuming the content that they are consuming we also need to know how they consume the content so do they watch videos or do they like reading long blog posts um, that would be really interesting data for us to know so when we know these things about the persona we can kind of write them out and uh, this will help the persona be something that everyone on the team can kind of relate to uh, so this really informs all of the copy that we're writing the pictures we're taking the videos we're producing um, and I've just made a fictional example of a persona here named John uh, he's a com- young Copenhagen based man studying at the University of Copenhagen he's not afraid to try new things and does a couple of creative side projects while he's studying which makes him busy but also a very social person um, him and his friends are always on the lookout for something fun to do on weekends and music is a preferred subject among them he's into urban music and loves to go through lyrics and their meaning on genius blasting the rap caviar playlist in his headphones while trying to come up with funny comments to his friends instagram posts he also likes in-depth video interviews with rap stars from complex and news about new records coming out so here we get really get um, a good sense of who John is and how we can help him with the content that we are really providing so maybe we should do some in-depth uh, video interviews we should definitely be present on Instagram um, and we should maybe look into creating a playlist on Spotify or creating content based on lyrics from the artists that are visiting our venue um, so I hope this um, this made it clear how a persona can can really help you guys the next step is to define your content formats and platforms and a content format c- can be a lot of things I've just tried to th- find some some different um, examples that I think are good um, so if we look here at Vega um, they have some really long and cool feature articles about um, artists coming to the venue so this is kind of a long-form blog post with recommendations on um, music to hear from this um, Talib Kweli um, so this is um, just a re- really cool thing it, it kind of puts Vega on the map as music experts and you know the hip-hop heads can go in here and, and check out some some cool songs before they go to the show and that is um, a really good way of providing value so here's um here's Menki from uh, from Reykjavik who is doing a podcast with all kinds of uh, artists. Um, so that's another format. It's an art venue, so it's kind of have a it kind of has a, a a cool fit with the presumable um, target audience that they have. Here at the Rockefeller, they're doing a really cool thing with uh, pictures from concerts. Always a lot of um, beautiful pictures from from the venue uh, that comes up. Um, often I think 
the week of the of the show and here we have an exit who has the ticket sales done on the stories platform on instagram so they add new ticket sales with swipe up links on um instagram here and all of this of course maps to different goals that they have um and different target audiences a good way to to think about defining your content formats and platforms is to think about the story first this is something that i think is a really good rule of thumb because you can really get caught up in you know chasing the new features the new um sort of stuff that you should be doing um but a good story can really work across features and formats. Um, and the way I see it, there's really only four types of content. Audio, there's video, there's text, and there's pictures. And underneath that, there's a lot of different executions and platforms. Um, but a really good story can really work across. I have an example here with uh, with Vega, who um, you saw before doing these long feature uh, articles. So here's an example of a feature article which um, they are uh, doing on their website so <clears throat> this is um, basically based on text but it also translates into video and a little teaser on um, their instagram page the full-length video on um, youtube and it also translates into pictures um, on both twitter and facebook so vega is really using all of these kinds of platforms to tell the same story <clears throat> from from um, different angles Step four is to create a production system. I tend to think about this in terms of who, what, and when. So in every phase of producing the content that you've just defined that you ought to produce, um, we need to define who is responsible, exactly what they're doing, and when they're doing it. Um, and so this will give us the production system in the end. So in the production phase, you know, we need to think about, for example, who takes the picture when the concert is on, if that's a format that we want to do, or it could be who shoots the video uh, with the artist two weeks before. But we need to define who, what, and when. So in the editing and preparation stage, you know, we need to find out who writes the copy when the picture has been delivered. Um, and in the publishing phase, we need to find out who posts the video at the right time with whatever that time uh, might be. So this really gives us a system where we can have a content meeting, where we go through all of the different uh, content that we need to be uh, producing for the next month or so. Um, we can kind of define who's the responsible person here. Uh, they can initiate the production of the format, get help from a photographer and an editor for editing and preparation. And when the content is finished, we, we go into the publishing phase. Um, so here we can define that the responsible person posts on the platforms that we've decided on, gets help for some advertising, and gathers the results from, from the ad spend. Um, so this might not be what it uh, would look like at your venue. Maybe there's only one person doing all of this, um, but it can be really helpful to kind of define what is the production system who is responsible, what is to be uh, done, and when um, does it have to be done by. So now just to sum up, uh, the step one was to set some goals. Um, step two was to define the target audiences. And step three was to define content formats and the platforms that you want to distribute on. Step four was to create a production system. I hope this video has opened your eyes to the value of a more strategic approach to online marketing. And if you want to see more like this, you should visit the Pulse website where you can find inspirational articles, videos, and information about the Pulse program.